my friends hope you've had a great week so far i uh, wanted to jump in here and make a video real quick on what i am seeing uh for good old amc um, as always before i jump into the video uh, please follow me on twitter if you haven't already it's colin underscore gladman um, like i said last time too Getting to the point where I know there's lots of people who are, you know, I got a lot of fake accounts out there and everything like that. Um, I won't ever DM you for money or ask you how your trade's going or anything along those lines. So uh, please be smart and don't get scammed by any of those people. Um, also, too, I always try to like or respond and talk to as many people as I can. Um, that gets harder and harder and harder every single day with more followers coming in. Uh, but just know that I, I, I really appreciate you guys and I try to help everybody as much as I can. Um, and then last, of course, but not least, you know, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a dude on the internet um, trying to be as helpful as I can. But you need to trade your plan regardless of what that is. I don't care what your plan is because I'm going to trade my plan. So I want, I want you to do the best that you can uh, for your plan and your portfolio. Um, let's go through today just a little bit. So on Twitter, I talked about how... Um, and so we'll, we'll jump into the chart a little bit too here in just a second, guys. But overall, kind of what I'm seeing, uh, first things first, the, the OBV on AMC right now on the four hour is just almost going uh, straight up. Um, like I said, it, it's up here in the trading ranges of where we are. Once again, from OBV, from a volume standpoint of where we are, were when we were up in like the, the 50s and the 60s. And so, um, you know, and that's why I, I said right here, you know, one of these things does not look like the other. So we've got big time price action heading way downhill while the OBV has always constantly kept making these uh, higher lows and is now pushing the top of the range. So that's going to be something uh, to keep an eye out for. Uh, from a cycle standpoint, uh, this is the accumulation and area that I see us playing out right now. Um, I tweeted out uh, some stuff about Wyckoff earlier. We're going to jump into that in just a second. But essentially, this is kind of the this is, this is the schematic that I see us doing. So we have been um, distributing, obviously, um, as, as we've been, you know, I think I looked today, we're, we're still at like a 50% drop from uh, where we were even just about two and a half months ago. Um, but now we're, we've really kind of been hitting some bottom. We've been finding our bottom. And, and so we're starting to accumulate before we start to uh, mark back up. Um, as far as the media is concerned, man, it's, it's like every 30 seconds, you know, we're firing missiles, we're not firing missiles. And when I say we're um, I'm talking about Ukraine and Russia. And so the market is all over the place with that right now. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, all shorts are just future buyers, my friend. And, and we got all the time in the world. Um, AMC's been bouncing back and forth like crazy. Um, so uh, today, as we started to move back, which is what I said was going to happen um, yesterday. I'll go to that tweet um, where I said, you know, I apologize. I didn't get a video out yesterday, uh, but nothing has really changed, you know, too much because we were pretty flat. Uh, we were really struggling to get above that $20 mark. And so because we were struggling and it was starting to feel like we were losing some momentum, um, that's why I said, you know, right here, Feels like we're a little bit out of momentum right now. We might need to do a pullback, and that's exactly what happened today. Um, and you know, and then I said in that pullback range, you know, that the 1850 um, was going to be the first level that I thought that that we would find support at. Also, as far as the fibs go. So once again, um, if if you want more kind of intraday updates or anything along those lines, don't know what that is. Um, then, like I said, just make sure you follow me on Twitter. Um, because I will definitely get, always get as many videos out as I can. Uh, but just due to my coaching schedule, guys, so once again, I coach martial arts every single day, uh, you know, Monday through Thursday, you know, from about 1 o'clock in the afternoon until about 10 o'clock at night. And so um, during the week, you know, 
I, I have breaks during the day where I can, you know, get some tweets out, but it's it's impossible to try to get a video out till late at night. So I'll have more videos on the weekend. But let's jump over here into the chart. So once again, just like, I'm sorry, let me go back to Twitter. I lied. So here is what I'm looking at as far as our accumulation right now from a Wyckoff standpoint, okay? And that's basically what I've got built right here. So once again, we had our massive sell-off right here. And now we are in a accumulation phase. So uh, the reason I said we would come back and test this 1850 is so here is uh, right now, guys, I'm on the hourly chart if you want to look or follow along with me. So uh, from right here where we've been starting on November 16th, where we really kind of started cascading down, this is our big bear trend line. Um, we've had a couple of false breakouts. To me, this was the first time we've really broken out and it, and it was a little bit more solid. Honestly, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more volume come with it. However, the nice thing to see is that we came down and as you can see, almost perfectly retested the top of that wedge and then had a nice reaction on the last hour of the day. Um, so what I'm going to go to now is I'm going to go to the 15 minute chart. And like I said, you can just see how this looks pretty much exactly like the schematic. Now, it never has to play out exactly like the schematic. Uh, there's schematics where we've got a spring right here in phase C. This is what a schematic looks like if you don't have this spring in phase C. So, sorry, let me get back over here. So that's basically exactly what we've got playing out. Um, I tweeted out today that I would really like to see us come in here and get this gap fill um, that's at 1790. I really don't wanna leave that gap behind unless we break far away from it with some really solid volume and then I'll feel better about it. But I just assume have no reasons to retrace. And once again, you can see if I get in here a little bit closer right here, um, we came down, but we did not fill that gap. So from 1798 to about 1785, really, we, we've got a little bit of a gap that I would definitely like to be uh, filled up. Now, right here, once we hit the markup phase, this is not a, so once again, I'll go back to the schematic. Uh, this markup right here, so we, we've got a sign of strength, and that's our local sign of strength right here. But once we move out and we go into phase E for the markup, that is not going to be phase E as far as like new all-time highs or anything along those lines. Where I would see this one going is I think I could see it's taking us up to you know, somewhere in that 25 possibly to $28 range would be our next markup phase. Um, and then we've, we've got some work to do at that point in time. Um, the reason that I would say that is because, and I don't have it on this chart, but I'll, I'll pull it up here in a little bit, is the, the visible range where the volume is traded. Um, we, I think we've got some work to do in the 20s, but I think this local uh, accumulation phase, the markup, so the phase uh, D, no, I'm sorry, phase E, um, so phase E would take us up to that uh, $28 range right in there. Now, what we are going to probably see here is this doesn't mean that just like tomorrow it's like, hey, here we go, there's the markup phase or anything like that. Just like none of this over here, my friends, none of this, none of that is just straight downhill, okay? So we're not just gonna go straight up here. You know, we're, we're gonna grind it out, okay? Um, this grind right here, you know, heading back up is kind of our, you know, little run into earnings or anything like that, I think is probably the most uh, likely scenario. So I think tomorrow, uh, people were tagging me about after hours today. Once again, my friends, as always, after hours, take it with a grain of salt, unless, news or like big time volume or anything like that is accompanied with uh, the move. But a 10 to 20% move and after hours shouldn't raise your blood pressure in any way, shape or form. Obviously, I'm always happy with seeing green, um, but we don't want little 20 cent gap ups or anything like that because all that means is we're going to be retracing or anything along those lines. Same thing with this gap that's right in here. I just assume not have it. All right, so if it's a 4 or $5 gap up, that's different, okay? But 20-cent moves or anything along those lines, don't 
don't stress it out about that. So for tomorrow, I think max pain I saw was like at 1950. So around that ballpark is going to be or under would be what I expect for tomorrow. I personally would be shocked if we are over 20 with the uh, option chain. And sorry, my friends, I'm just I'm looking up max pain. Yeah, 1950 tomorrow. So I would expect, you know, a little bit above that, a little bit below that. I would be shocked if we're up here uh, above the 20. Uh, once we struggle to get up into this 20, I just knew at that point in time it, it just wasn't going to happen. Happy to be wrong. I think I think I would give maybe like a 10 at the very most 20% chance of being over a 20 uh, by the end of tomorrow. I think I think we got to kind of pull back, consolidate a little bit, you know. So if in the morning we kind of came back down in here, I would like to see us fill the gap. Uh, push up a little bit and then going to pull back and then well, no, finish that day, you know, somewhere around in there. So it's something like that. Wouldn't surprise me at all. Tomorrow, I think that's the uh, most plausible thing. Um, but once again, you know, with volume, all things are possible. And speaking of volume, let's take a look at it. All right. So I know volume hadn't been great lately, but if you look especially on this big move you know that we had right here once we push to our sign of strength area you know the bullish the greenish vol the greenish the green the bullish volume is by far and away the strongest volume i mean our fall today you know and once again don't just scream manipulation yes i agree that's what it was but is what it is but i mean you can see this drop today was on tiny volume okay so just no stress no stress. Look at the volume. When in doubt, look at the volume and what's going on with it, all right? This push-up towards the end of the day was way bigger than, than our pullback. So just who saw a little bit, man? So much manipulation, you know, screaming going on out there. And like I always say, I agree. But you know what else is? All of them. All right. Uh, let's jump in over here. Oh, no, I forgot. I wanted to talk about one other thing. Sorry, my friends. Once again, I don't ever plan out these videos. So let me get rid of what I'm looking at Wyckoff wise. And I'm going to go back to the daily. So the reason I was talking about how I think we needed a pullback is uh, the Bollinger Bands. So I cannot stress enough that I am not just a cycle guy. I'm not just a Wyckoff guy, even though I, I see where people say everything's Wyckoff. Um, but I use all the TA tools that are available to my disposal. I am going to be using when it comes to the way I look at charts, okay? So how Bollinger Bands work is you've got a moving average, okay? And that's gonna be the orange line. Um, and then you have two, so moving average by definition is just that, it, it's the moving average, okay? And then you have two uh, st standard deviations either way. And the whole purpose of the Bollinger Bands, which were created by John Bollinger, I highly recommend going and learning about them. Uh, but the whole purpose of the Bollinger Bands is to figure out when we might have some volatility coming into the stock, okay? So with the two uh, deviations on, on either side of it, the 95, so Bollinger, what his goal is, 95% of all trading occurs within the, the deviation, the, the two deviation um, of either side of the moving average, okay? So, and you can see, as you look at it, okay, Pretty much 95% of the trading that goes on, anytime we start to get above it, we, we correct back into it, okay? And so this is what I was looking at right here, okay? We started to get a little too far above it. We got kicked down. And so this move right here, or look at that, look at it, all right. Came down, touched the top of the range, pushed back up. This is all a good, healthy move, okay? Um, just like I tweeted out the other day, I don't want just a straight up, you know, rocket missile because that that's going to be, I would prefer a healthier move. Let's really create a solid floor here and then we can start, you know, rocketing up. I don't want to see a rocket unless it's 
you know, Moaz or anything along those lines. Um, because I'm a long-term investor in AMC, so a you know healthy movement on a healthy stock is going to be what I'm looking for. So um, the Bollinger Bands measure when we could see some you know bigger, more volatile moves. And what you really want to see is you really want to see them kind of tightening. So pretty much look at this range right here. You can see that overall it's a tighter trading range. And once again, this is where myself included, a bunch of people, we all thought we were going to see the next leg up right here. And unfortunately, that didn't happen. We saw a big move. It was just a big move downward, okay? So the tightening of the Bollinger Bands um, is going to be a good thing that we want to see because that lets us know when we're ready for a more volatile move, okay? So a push back down here and honestly even coming back down here is right around the 17 um, to test this moving average. All possible, okay? I don't know that I think we're gonna come back down quite that far. Like I said, I'd like to see the gap fill, um, but I think tomorrow's gonna be kind of just a cool off day and getting us ready to uh, potentially, you know, make a bigger move heading into next week. So once again, Bollinger Band, something I'm gonna keep an eye on, and you can see what happened to them, you know, on our big runs, all right? And look, look, <laughs> PA don't work! It don't work. Look, look how tight it got before the big June run. All right. So that's what we're going to be looking for. And, and you can see these are starting to narrow here just a little bit. So these things keep getting a little bit tighter, especially with us hanging out at 100% utilization. If we can get cost to borrow to come up, all that good stuff, then me like. All right. So what I am going to be looking for, let me go to the daily here. So once again, this is our, from our all time high, this is our big kahuna resistance line. Um, right now it's gonna be putting us in about the $25 range. Um, so I've always said, anytime we talk about breaking this, I wanna see that, you know, really breaking with some volume. Um, real quick, let's look at the the visible range. Um, if you are new to my channel, uh, essentially what this does is the visible range is showing the volume that has been traded in that area and the stock likes to go towards the gaps, all right? And you can see right here where we've had our big bounce was right at some of the biggest um, volume traded area um, in AMC's entire history, okay? And you can also see that it's way less traded up here than it is down here. So that's why I said if we saw the reaction that we wanted to down here, it makes more sense to head up than it does to head down. Uh, we're gonna be watching our support line, um, which acted as support here, acted as resistance leading up to the January run, um, came back and acted as support at the buy button removal and is now acting as support here. And so my two big resistance and support lines, you know, come to a point, you know, essentially in April, I think we'll see a big breakup or a big breakdown, you know, before then, obviously, if, especially if we keep accumulating and moving up, you know, obviously, I'm, I am along on this stock. I am bullish on this stock. I will always say when I see downside, but once again, it, it makes more sense, and I believe the future of AMC is upwards, not downwards. Trade your plan. So when we look at the indicators here, um, as far as the EMAs is concerned, so it took a while for us. Let me get rid of the, the visible range. But it took us a while to recover this 20-day EMA. And I'll bet, wow, look at it acting as support now, all right? So the next big EMA is the 50-day EMA, which is going to take us to the $22 range. Um, and just like I said, I said like almost a month ago on my videos that the 200 and the 100 would essentially follow my, my big old resistance line. And look, I know I'm always wrong, but look. So, 20 day is acting as support. So for tomorrow, that's right in that $18.36. So, uh, but like I said, we, we do have that gap that I would like to fill. So a 
you know, if if we dumped in the morning and, and then rose after that, I would be super okay uh, with that move. We don't have to fill the gap, all right? I would just feel better if we did. When it comes to indicators, another reason to not be super concerned is looking at the MACD. So even on a day where we had a pullback, look, the MACD is not starting to curl down or anything along those lines. Yes, we got a more uh, light green day up here. Once again, that is a sign of starting to lose momentum. You can see it happen back in here. But the big thing that we want to look for is we want to, that, that blue line to keep headed up away from the orange line okay when those cross over you can see right here when those cross over bad things happen up here so no we don't want debt all right we like green green is good so macd still looks okay we've also on the vortex indicator So right here, flattened off a little bit, but didn't you know start to plunge down or anything along those lines. So all the indicators that I track, everything still looks good. RSI is gonna be probably neutral-ish still. Yep, right in the middle of neutral. So we still got room to run as far as the RSI is concerned. Um, let me pull up OBV. So start with the daily. So small tick down right here, as expected. So once again, when, when it's a green volume bar, um, that volume is added to the OBV. When it's red, it's taken away. So you can see that we are constantly still making higher lows on the OBV. So that means for me, I still believe you know our bullish trend, our bullish reversal that we're looking for is still intact for now, all right? But we wanna keep an eye on that. But uh, I said before that the level that I'm going to be looking to get over is going to be right in here about this five, um, all the way up to five and a half, and, and we're going to see some good things coming. Where, I mean, look at the four hour, just crazy. So the four hour OBV is super bullish. It is... Yeah, so I mean, look, this one is very bullish. So essentially, the OBV, the on balance volume, is still up here where we were up in the uh, yeah up in the high 50s, low 60s, up here the 52. I mean, even even right in here. So our price has done nothing but gotten the dog beat out of it, while OBV for the most part is you know, close to making all time highs. All right. You know, you could even look at this right here. Kind of like this look right here. Boom. Making an ascending triangle. So we start breaking out of this range. And like I said, I, I believe the price will catch up to what OBV is indicating. All right. Um, let's last but not least, let's look at just a few of the fibs so you guys know what I will be looking for. So when you do fib retracements, yep, okay, oops, you go from your low up to your high, and that's going to give you the areas that you want to look for. All right, and like I said, these are always my favorite for the TA don't work people. Look how much each one is traded around and provides support and resistance the entire time. So, man, I am a broken record here, but I'm gonna say it till I quit hearing it. It's just TA works even on a manipulated stock, even though they all are manipulated stocks. However, I do believe some are more manipulated than others. And I definitely think AMC and GameStop would fall into that category but they still respect T-A. I swear, if this thing ever really squeezes and we do have a big get together, first thing I'm gonna do to some of you is I'm just gonna come up and I'm just gonna have to slap you in a very loving way, but just like a come on, fam. So be looking at if, uh, so this one, 
I mean, if you follow my channel, you know I always talk about the two most common retracements on FIBS is going to be the 382 and the 618. So if we came back down to the 382, not only would it give us a double bottom right here, but it would take care of the gap. So if we push down here tomorrow morning and then started coming back up, and I imagine we would kind of get kicked down right here and then finish the day, 19, we'll just call it. We'll just throw a dart, man. $19.26, all right? I feel like something that's going to look just like that would be what happens tomorrow, all right? That's trying to be as exact, but we'll have some fun with it, all right? Y'all be good. Don't stress out, okay? Going up and coming down and going up again and coming back down again and then going up and, you know, it's just all part of the process, man. You just need to chill. If it stresses you out too much, I cannot stress enough. Just walk away, all right? If, if it stresses you out too much, set some alerts, walk away. Um, as for me, I am looking at this entire process as a learning opportunity for myself, uh, for others. Um, so it's just you know, I always say you find what you're looking for. So let's look for reasons to be positive, whether it's a red day, green day, let's learn what in, what new information. Um, you know, I tell my, my students all the time, you don't stay the same person every single day. Every single day, you either take a step backwards or you take a step forward. And I am a person who I will have days that I go backwards for sure. I'm just like anybody else. But I need to take way more days forward than I do backwards. So rather than spending my time sitting around and crying about manipulation 24 seven, I'm gonna be looking for reasons to understand the manipulation and where is it a possibility for us to go next. So even if I fail, I'm gonna fail upwards, okay? I'm not going to not hit my goals or fail because I'm not trying hard enough or I'm not learning or anything along those lines. Once again, that's that's just me. If you need to sit around and you know scream about manipulation and you know get a box of Kleenex out and bury your head in some tissues, um, well, I mean, you do your thing, man. You know, that's just, that's not how I do things. That's not how I'm going to run my channel. That's not how I'm going to run my life. We are going to be moving forward. I hope you feel the same. I will see you guys tomorrow. $19 and what I say, 26 cents, 29 cents, somewhere out right in there. That's my dart for tomorrow. Let's have some fun with it. All right. And chill. Y'all be good. Much love.